So last time I came out on the boat I had a few engine issues. Um, it went into limp home mode, which is not ideal. But luckily for me, I just coincidentally had ordered the diagnostic kit. So I've downloaded the software onto my laptop. Now I'm not a technical genius, so I don't know how straightforward this is gonna be, but I'm gonna try and diagnose what the problems are. Okay, so I have a feeling the diagnostic port is under here. Okay, so here's the cover off. That looks like the socket there, so that triangle connector is the same as what's on the, the diagnostic cable. That's a dummy socket, so it looks like there's nothing going to it, so that's gotta be the one to use. Okay, so I finally managed to get my software to work, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, by the way. Um, make sure you've got your drivers installed for the cable. So I've run a diagnostic report, and this is what I've got. This is with the engine off, so it says no active engine faults, or no active faults found, um, but then it says the occurred faults are 219 hours, there's been a cylinder one fuel injector open circuit detected, and that's happened 53 times. The last time it happened was 230 hours, which is what the engine's on now. And this one here, this is with the engine running, and this shows that there is a, a, an engine fault, so it's code number 51, um, and it's obviously happened quite a few times uh which is it's not going to be ideal so that's probably the problem it's obviously an injector related issue so that's where the investigation can begin the code 51 was an open circuit on number one injector so i'm just checking for bad wiring but i mean as you can see the wiring is absolutely brand new also going to just make sure i probably take this out um clean the fuel out of that little fuel filter there just in case there is any water and it doesn't look like there is um, but there is a potential that, well, I don't know, there's maybe a tiny little film on top of that, so we'll just get rid of that petrol and pump some new petrol through. Um, and the engine's great, Nick, like. So I've changed the fuel in, in there. I've looked the wire over. I think it's probably worth checking out the battery because this isn't the greatest installation in the world. This wasn't me that did this. So I might just make sure that this is in decent Nick and that it's got good connections. So I've re-established the terminal connections in there and made sure they're clean. But then I found this. Now the battery cable on this is pretty much overkill because the battery's here and the engine's there. Um, so I think what's happened, I suspect, is I can see corrosion underneath this tape. This has probably been sitting in the bilge where there was seawater and it must have corroded through. Um, so the smartest thing would do would be just to shorten this entirely because there's no need for it to be that long. But I am planning to move the battery forward because I'm going to get more weight forward in the boat so that it, um, it doesn't porpoise as much. So I'll just have a look into here and see what, what that's about. Make sure that we're getting plenty of um, charge to the engine itself. Right, so this connection here isn't the greatest. I think it would still be electrically conductive, but I think it needs a bit of solar in there to make that a better job. I wouldn't want 100% rely on that if I was out at sea. There's no way this is not running on all three cylinders because it sounds far too sweet. Okay, so what I've ascertained so far is that I've possibly got a bad injector. Um, that's certainly the fault code that's showing. And when I did some tests, I um, disabled two of the other three, two of the other three injectors, and it killed the engine. So um, when I disabled the injector that's testing as bad. Uh, it didn't kill the engine, so it's not its not actually working, so it must be running on two cylinders at the moment, which is remarkable considering how smooth it sounds. Um, but anyway, I'm going to do a resistance test on the, the injector that I think is bad to see whether it's a write-off or not. I think it's going to be a mission taking the rest of the outboard housing off to get at the um, this bottom injector. So it turns out injector 3 is the lowest one down, unfortunately for me, but, but typically. And I'm quite concerned that I'm going to lose some of the bolts over the side. So I've just driven all the way home to get a socket set and of course, of course, the thing that the worst thing that could happen has just happened. I've just dropped the bloody ratchet over the side. I can't believe it. I, honestly, sometimes I can punch myself in the face. Alright, here's it is. I've managed to split the cowl far enough to get access to it. I've moved one of these little things here, whatever that is. Um, 
so that's the injector that's bad there's the spark plug I was going to take the spark plug out and just to have a look and see what sort of condition it's in on the inside see whether it's flooded with fuel or not um, but obviously typically I haven't got a socket I've got a 15 and I've got a 17 and it's a 16 test the resistance is get your multimeter set it to ohms got it on 200 ohms and then put one prong under each one of the two pins in there it doesn't matter which way around I don't know if I can do this one handed so the numbers are they'll be high to start with and they'll come down 3.4 3.3 3.3 that's the first cylinder. Here's the second cylinder. 3.3, So the first two are exactly the same. And then the third one is exactly the same. So it's not a bad injector, or it's not necessarily electrically bad. Um, it might well be blocked. So I've just noticed a tiny little fraying in this wire here there too okay that tiny little wire that was corroded through there i've taped it up and insulated them as best i can for now um but i'll come back and sort them out but i've just um i've basically cleaned up all the connections to each individual injector i've tested all the injectors they're working uh, i can't find any other other bad wiring um so yeah that was only that tiny little bit of freeing on, on that wire there so anyway we're back into the diagnostic program I'm running a test on injector one now you can hear it clicking before it wasn't clicking start it up now if we go to dynamic tests disable injector one stops it running properly whereas before it was doing nothing oh that's good so faults showing no active faults i think we might have sorted this in my laptop battery uh, but this looks good this looks like I might just have to put it back together and we might actually have fettled this and save myself probably a fortune okay so that seems like it's fixed for now anyway I am um, thank god because that could have been an expensive one Everybody who's got a boat should know the Accra and bring out another thousand, um, especially with engines. I mean, outboards as well, and modern outboards, obviously they've got loads of technology in them. And it turns out that Evinrude, when they made the E-Tech the e series, the, EM, the EMM, which is basically like a, a car's ECU, the, co the control unit for the engine, um, it's not repairable, so that could be really expensive if that's ever something to happen in the future. But anyway, touch wood for now. All seems to be well and I'm looking forward to get up there and testing it. Save myself a few quid.